Hello everybody, Atma Namaste. Namaste guys. Let me just... Um... Okay. To just draw. Shall we start with a short invocation? Close your eyes, connect down to your palate. Inhale and exhale, feel yourself in the presence of the teacher. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chaukok, Sweet to Lord Maha Guruji Mele, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, especially to the angels and great teachers and masters of theosophy, to the great beings of knowledge, light, and power, to our soul and divine self. We thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your divine guidance, for your divine patience and presence. We ask you to help us to have a greater and clearer a deeper understanding of these priceless teachings. Help us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge and use it to become better instruments to serve you better. We offer ourselves in your service with thanks and in full faith, so be it. To all the angels and great beings of communication and our respective Wi-Fi's, we ask for your help to have a proper, clear connectivity, consistent and steady. With thanks and in full faith, so be it, so be it, so be it, so it is. May slowly open your eyes. Atma Namaste, everybody. Welcome. We continue with uh, chapter four. Now it's uh, much faster. The chapter seems to be. Shall we? Yeah, you can. So we stopped uh, where we're supposed to talk about the vegetable kingdom. If you remember. And so uh, we're talking about prana, the, the need for the prana in, in our bodies and also how there, there could be someone who's got a lot of vital energy and there could be someone with very little vital energy. That's where we, we stopped. And um, I, had, I have had the, this experience personally where I do feel that I'm not um, you know, very strong. I feel very weary, weak, and uh, the need to, to see that um, I, I need more prana. And so one of the things that they mention is with reference to the vegetable kingdom, that the vegetable kingdom also does absorb prana, right? And it says, but they only absorb a small part of it. Uh, interestingly, trees like the eucalyptus tree and the pine tree extract again the globules that we're talking about. Uh, however, they for some reason reject the rose uh, colored prana out of all, all the combinations we were talking about. Uh, because they don't require it and so they say that if you can be around a tree like that the pine tree or the eucalyptus tree because there's so much abundance of the rose red prana which we require for our health and for our nervous system to sustain itself it, it is something that they say you could do especially when you're feeling weak and tired and so i think that's one of the reasons why master Chow tells us he says you can go and absorb tree prana he does say sun prana but specifically, he says, if you want to recharge yourself, one of the ways to do this is actually to go and sit near a healthy tree, ask permission from the great being, because it is part of the uh, vegetable kingdom or the plant kingdom, and then sit there and absorb it. Uh, another thing I remember when I did uh, the basic pranic healing course, uh, it was also mentioned to scan the tree so that it's not actually a tree that has uh, that is in the process of dying because everything has uh, you know, it, it's born, it's, it grows, and then it dies. So he says, especially look for healthy trees, healthy, strong trees, and so scan before you sit there to absorb this energy. So um, cities like uh, Bangalore, we used to have a lot of eucalyptus trees, and now they're beginning to be chopped off because of water drainage by then. But I'm sure many of you stay in regions where hopefully you still have some eucalyptus trees or pine trees, or even just healthy trees right, uh, that are bearing fruit and flowering and, and healthy and green, uh, do take the time to try and absorb this uh, prana. And I think we're lucky because of uh, COVID, the air out there is still quite fresh compared to uh, maybe even January. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that's basically that paragraph. I'll hand it over to Amit. Okay. So a uh, few things I found interesting here. It says the vegetable kingdom also absorbs vitality. Um, and when they say the word it absorbs vitality, you have to understand it absorbs and it stores as well. It's not just absorption. 
it's absorption and storing. Why do I think this? Uh, because uh, vegetables have prana. So you have uh, prana in a carrot, you have prana in fresh vegetables, and preserved vegetables have less prana than fresh vegetables. So the fresher the vegetable, it seems the more prana there is. And it's not only uh, prana from the air, most of it is actually ground prana, which is extremely rejuvenating for the body. That's one of the reasons why ginseng is very, very powerful, by the way, because if you see ginseng, I don't know whether this is true or not. They said that wherever ginseng grows when it's wild, once you harvest it, um, you cannot plant anything in that soil for some time, for maybe a few, I don't know, when Master was talking to us, uh, he said few years. Can you just mute it? Um, a few years or a few months, you, you can't just you, utilize the soil because the amount of prana it has taken in from all around that soil in that area is tremendous and stored in that ginseng uh, over 10 years. That's why the older the ginseng, the more potent, maybe 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. It's so potent that sometimes in Korea, they don't understand the principle of cleansing and energizing. So they eat ginseng, the whole root sometimes, just like that. And then they just pass out for 40 minutes, one hour, two hours. They just sleep. And they sleep. Uh, according to Master Chua, when he looks at them, he, when he was talking to us about it, he says, you know, that is too much energy. That's why their body cannot handle it. So they just fall asleep. Uh, so that is why even when you buy the ginseng paste, you just take just a little bit. It's really good quality because the amount of prana. So it's absorb and store. Uh, then I think uh, one of the things that Master Chua says is when you get over energized, when you're doing too much of meditation and not exercising, you the congestion that you feel is literally like when you feel weak the same symptoms occur so i, I think that's one of the reasons why uh, when you get over energized sometimes you just want to you know just lie down there and sleep and not exercise the same thing with vitamins vitamin i heard the surplus is more uh, the the symptoms for vitamin surplus in the body and, and the symptoms for deficiency is is similar or the same same thing with energy too much energy even congestion and depletion the symptoms are sometimes very similar according to Master Chua. Anyway, um, so it talks about uh, absorb and vitality, but seems in most cases to use only a small part of it. All right, now what part is it using? Uh, so the best ones they're saying is pine and eucalyptus. Master Chua has told us, especially about pine tree, many, many times. Um, and it extracts the uh, globules in um, almost exactly the same constitu constituents as the higher part of man's etheric body. Higher part of man's etheric body could be above the solar plexus area. So the way the, the colors that are required by the tree are maybe those parts. And uh, rejects any superfluous atoms charged with rose-colored prana. Now, uh, if you remember rose-colored prana, um, it has to do with the nervous system, all right? Um, and plants, their nervous system is not that evolved. So my understanding is they don't need it. <laughs> they don't need the bridge completely. So they just, they just expel it in what they don't need. But what is someone's garbage is someone else's gold. <laughs> so we need it. So we absorb it. So it's very, very good for us. Okay. That's, that's my understanding behind that. Um, Repeat eucalyptus tree. Uh, uh, eucalyptus tree. So pine tree, eucalyptus tree, there are ways. So there are three ways. Don't underestimate the power of this technique. It is an extremely potent technique uh, in self-healing where we have seen many cases where the, um, you have to understand, by the way, about the nervous system, there, there was a misunderstanding about the rose colored and all that stuff. Rose colored could be light whitish red. <laughs> Just keep that in mind because that part goes to the Ming main and to the basic. That's my understanding of it. Okay, because if it, if it goes somewhere, it goes to the main and basic, and that light reddish red is required, it's essential for sustenance of the body. I think Master Chua in the advanced book uh, has written very clearly that the basic and the main, the light reddish red, is used to energize and vitalize the entire body, that particular type of red. Okay, so that means probably ground prana, but also it could be rose colored, rose could be light whitish red. Um, and also, there are many uh, factors involved uh, with this. So, you, you know, um, it doesn't mean that people with nervous system disorders would have lack of rose color <laughs> in their body. It's just talking about the correlation between astral and uh, etheric. You know, Master Chua makes things very easy. These are very good to learn, but they're not very useful in terms of healing. Um, if you're looking at healing, all you need to know is, um, you see, I hope it comes up in the book, but a very big portion of 
healing requires what we call astral energy. Okay, what is astral energy? Uh, receptivity. It's called the principle of receptivity. You might be the best healer in the world, but if the patient is not receptive, does not have conductivity, does not have faith, the energy will just not go through. So to bridge or to guide that etheric energy through the etheric body and physicalize, you need emotional, what is faith? What is conductivity? That is astral in nature. Okay, so some of it is not clear because they have missed out a very big part of the system, which is the Ida and Pingala and its uh, responsibilities. So uh, anyway, we will, so there's not enough data for you to compile a proper answer, but it's good information to know. But yeah. So yes, um, you, if you also remember in the old days when people travel from one village to another or, or, or long distances, they usually try to rest under a healthy tree. And I think in India, there are certain specific trees that they say you should try and rest under. Uh, it's not just the shade under the tree that helps. It's also this prana. And yes, also the oxygen, definitely. Uh, it does have this ability to take the gases that we release and change it into uh, quality of uh, um, air that we require with sufficient oxygen and so also with the prana yes and and one of the reasons could be like uh, Amit said the requirement for their nervous system compared to ours is completely different and so for them it's it's not of because you have to take into consideration what you learned in the previous chapters and also uh, the what we were talking about the tree um, the tree there are many many stories we spoke about uh, and it's there several times in the basic book how you can do self-healing using the using tree prana uh, which is basically that prana ex expelled plus a lot of ground prana because when you sit at the root of the tree um, uh, i've heard of colonel alcott he's one of the founders of theosophy he used to be a really fantastic healer um, i heard he would heal many many patients a day uh, if you have glaucoma maybe in a few sessions he heals it he would do miraculous healings and maybe he would heal i don't know how many patients lots of patients a day and every time he would get contaminated, he would go to the sea and have a salt bath because in Chennai, they had the sea there. And one time, uh, he, his healing started to take longer and longer and longer. And what happened was uh, his, um, his teacher came in front of him and said, look, because even simple cases would take him a long, long time. What was almost instantaneous before, even four or five sessions, it would not, I'm not sure how many, but quite a few sessions. It would, not, it would take a much more longer time. And his teacher came in front of him and said, look, if you don't stop this, you're too contaminated because there was no cleansing. There was no principle of contamination. There was no cleaning of hands. Um, so because of that, his body would get overwhelmed. And uh, the teacher said, if you heal anymore, your body is, you'll have a heart attack or you'll die or something like that. Your body will die. So he tried the salt bath. He tried all these techniques. It did not work. What worked was sitting under a tree for several months, just absorbing vitality from the tree, big, big trees. And he, I, I don't know whether he would change the trees, but absorbing the vitality from big, healthy trees. And that is something Master Chua also made us do whenever he would go for walks or anything like that. You just put your hands up, you absorb. Um, there are many techniques of absorption, so it becomes uh, on a deeper level. But that is a problem if it's a contaminated tree, like Kasumi says. So if your body starts to get itchy, that means the tree is not very clean. Uh, if your body starts to get numb, that means the tree has a lot of prana. Your it's too a lot of energy for your body, which is also good. Which is good. <laughs> so so the tree uh, is extremely extremely powerful. Yeah. Okay? So don't use the same tree for too long. Yeah, especially if you're unwell. There was a story Master used to always give. I think we should stop talking about the tree. <laughs> the story was I, I found it hard to believe. Okay, because I'm very mental sometimes. But uh, sorry, Master. Uh, but um, it is if he says it's true, I believe him. Uh, there was this lady, she had cancer and uh, I think she was terminal or I'm not sure about the details. Uh, but apparently what she did was every day she would just, she had this big old tree after learning this class, uh, at that time they should teach self-healing, uh, she would go and hug the tree every day. Uh, every day she just hugged the tree, she would hug the tree and Master taught her another technique of transference of energy. Uh, and what happened was uh, she got healed and the tree died. <laughs> So every time he used to give the story, the class would be like, oh no, he's like, hey, what's more important, the tree or a human being? <laughs> People cut trees every day, at least here it's saving a life. So anyway, um, yep. uh, hence the proximity tree is extremely beneficial. I'll show you the slides later so that we can um, 
you know, you can see us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So from that, uh, we were talking about this. We're going to move now into the health aura, right? Something that we're familiar with. So we let's... We about it yesterday also. I mean, last time. Um, me, no. Me, All right. So when we come, when we talk about the health aura, now they say that this consists of particles that are ejected, yes, from the physical body outwards. And it serves uh, a very important, or it's, it, it's, it serves as a very important function. It also helps to expel the disease-causing germs within our system. And so it continues to say, in health, the particles are thrown out through the pores in straight lines. So from the pores of your skin, right, at that little opening, there are these, these straight lines. And through that, this um, germs or viruses or whatever we picked up are then sent out. Now, as long as this health ray, which is supposed to be perpendicular, that is right angles, right? Right angles. It has to be 90 degrees. And so as long as it's straight, yes, and firm, you are definitely going to be in good health. As soon as it starts to change, it's going to be a problem. And so it continues to say, as long as the lines remain firm and straight, the body seems to almost entirely protect, entirely protect itself from the attack of evil physical influences. Basically, we're talking about disease-causing germs, bacteria, and other things. And so as long as your aura is healthy, the, even if there is something that got into it, because of this force with which the pranic energy gushes it out, it gets released out of your system. Yes, and so keeping our health auras uh, straight and, and firm, as they call it, is very uh, essential to our health. And so it continues to say that oh, if you the, the fingers. Okay. And so when a person is weak, for example, yes, or over fatigued, or you have a wound, or you're depressed, or you're upset about something, then they say what happens is a lot of the prana within the body is then concentrated towards that part. Right? Say, for example, you have a very bad sore throat, then most of the prana gets settled here to try and heal it. Yes, or if you're upset, then towards your solar plexus to get you to start feeling better. And in the process, what happens is the health rays don't function as normal as it should. And then they say that consequently, a serious uh, diminution, and I'm not sure if I, that's how you pronounce it, in the quality that is radiated, then the lines of the health ray will start to droop, yes, or become erratic or confused. Now, confused, I presume they mean entangled. Yeah, I don't think it's going all over the place like, like a crazy uh, person, but uh, just drooping and probably getting entangled. The system of defense is weakened and it is then comparatively easy for germs to attack us. So even during this time when we're having the COVID and there is a spike probably in most of our countries that we all live in at this point, keeping our health aura firm and straight is very important. And one of the ways to do that obviously is your general sweeping. So if you're not doing anything else, kindly do general sweeping on a regular basis for yourself. Yes, at least about three sets for yourself, for your family members, to see to it that these health rays are really perpendicular. Now, I know this uh, because sometimes I tend to have a respiratory issue, uh, especially when there's dust. Yes, I go into a place where there's dust and that's it. In a couple of seconds, I'm sneezing. And when I was much younger, when I uh, learned pranic healing, I would just try to clean, 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 thinking, you know, maybe it's congested, so it should become okay. And then uh, after a very long time, then I would try to energize it. But I realized in maybe an hour or so, it would come back. And so I realized in maybe three, four hours, I've become worse and worse and worse. And, and, and whether I'm standing, I'm studying, um, it becomes difficult because I'm constantly sneezing. And uh, I decided to then start doing general sweeping, even though it was just a local area, right? There's just this area that's affected. And I started to do general sweeping and then worked on cleansing and energizing this chakra of mine. It made a big difference. And so even today, as soon as I know I'm starting to sneeze, yes, I go wash up and clean myself. Otherwise, itchiness uh, kind of stays behind. And then I do general sweeping and it makes a big difference. Yes. And so um, the health rays, and if you notice for most cases, right? Uh, you will notice that there are at least minimum of three um, three sweepings, whether it's got to do with psychological or physical, but definitely physical. For example, fever, where you have, uh, whether, it, whether it's a respiratory issue, a gastrointestinal issue, or a tonsillitis issue, Master Chua says you do general sweeping because of the fever that manifests, right? And that is at least five or more. 
And so, uh, keeping this health raise in mind, uh, I'll hand it over to Amit. You can talk about the tongues. I want to talk about the tongues? Okay. <laughs> it's just one few words, right? Yes, I'll just say a few words. All right, so the next paragraph basically talks about this gentleman called Ram Prasad. And Rama Prasad is someone who uh, talks about the science of breath. And he talks about this halo, which is supposed to be uh, the end, yes, the end of your uh, prana body or whatever. And so it, they, he says that the body of the periphery of the halo of prana, and he says it's about 10 fingers. So when they talk about the fingers, here, interestingly, the, the finger is the width. They say it's not the length of the finger, but it's the width. Yes, and so it says 10 like that. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's the space. So they say when you inhale, that's the size of this so-called halo that you have around you. Uh, but when you exhale, it increases to 12. And then they continue to say in other activities, right, it starts to change as well. So when you're eating, I think it's 18. Uh, sorry, yeah, eating it's 18. Um, and also with speaking and with walking, it's interesting, it increases double to 24. But if you're running, it's even more increases to 42. And when you are living with another person, then it increases to 62. And when you sleep, it's about 100. And I'm wondering why it increases to 100 when you sleep. But anyway, recovery. yes, uh, recovery probably, yes. And so the reduction, uh, the reduction in length is said to result when a man overcomes desire. Uh, that is gains the eight siddhis. Uh, except, mm. yes, yeah, it seems probable. Um, however, we're not too sure. Um, the author says here that we're not aware whether his halo is referring to actually the health aura. Anyway, but they, they've given us that extra information here for whatever reason. So we shared that with you. Uh, so my uh, understanding of it is, for example, when Master Chua actually makes us do the breathing. Yes, when you come to the basic class and he says, inhale and exhale. Scan first the aura of the person, then inhale and exhale. You really see it improve, increase. Uh, with the meditation, the same thing happens. Uh, so I think for me, it's just to see uh, how this aura, even if it's not the health aura, or all of them, the inner aura, the health aura, and the outer aura, as we speak in um, pranic healing, actually changes with, for example, your breath. Yes, as long as you're healthy, you have a big aura, you have healthy health rays, which are perpendicular and firm, which keeps you then healthy. That's, that's me. Okay, health aura. We spoke about this earlier, right? I think uh, when they were talking about that whole pale blue and all that stuff. All right, now just imagine this, health aura. This is in respect to the spleen. So energy is coming in from different parts of your body, all right? You have energy coming from the spleen. You have energy coming in through your lungs, through the back heart. You have energy coming from the ground, through the soles and the basic. All this energy is coming simultaneously from the back, from the front, from the bottom, and from the top, <laughs> right? So you have energy coming from all directions. Now, all this is redirected around the body in a proper uh, calculated manner. The manner in which is specified in the physical permanent seat. And this flow of energy will start to move very, very fast through the body, depending on how fast it's coming in, all right? Now, say a healthy person, the spleen is clean, the back heart is clean, the basic is clean, the crown is clean. All this energy is coming in. Obviously, clean chakra means more energy. There's, imagine like an exhaust fan, it's not dirty. So more energy will come in with minimal resistance. So tremendous amount of energy flowing in. This energy passes through your body. Your body can only handle a certain amount of energy. It absorbs what it needs. And then after that, the surplus energy along with the empty shells. Remember, uh, this energy gets pulled into your body and it gets absorbed. It's like osmosis of, you know, it's like psychic osmosis within your body where only the shell is remaining and the prana is uh, removed. It's like discharge of a battery, right? So your battery is, is gone. So all these uh, empty shells have to be removed. So it, all these empty shells somehow come to the pore of the body from all directions. It comes to the etheric body a quarter of an inch in front of your skin. Now, the etheric body is filled with these things called pores. Now, this is very important for you to remember that there are pores on the etheric body because you will use this in higher arhatics and a higher uh, meditation practice and higher self-healing and all that. So this pours all over your body, exhales all this energy, okay? 
Now say the chakra is clean, all right? The chakra is clean, so much more energy gets exhaled out, pushed up, right? And there's a force generated. Just imagine, and it's continuous because you're continuously bringing in energy and bringing out energy all the day, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So this energy is coming in, it's going out. So as it goes out, by the time the end of the first stream is over, the second stream has already begun. So this is a continuous flow. It's like, imagine you're using a fire hose for a healthy person, it's strong, all right? So any, now, now this is built all around your body. You have all these, imagine water jet, parallel rain showers going all around your body. All right, all right. You know, when the shower is too, uh, so heavy that you can't even come close to it, you know, when they hose you down. You're like, so any germs trying to come in, any germs trying to come in, gets pushed back with this force. Okay, that's what it's saying. And what type of germs? So they're saying uh, any um, phys evil physical influence, Master calls contamination. <laughs> but evil physical influence sounds, sounds cooler, actually. Sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, such as ger disease germs, the germs being actually repelled or carried away by the outrush of pranic force. You understand? So it's trying to come in, it pushes out. All right. Uh, when, uh, okay, now, now what happens if the chakras are not so clean? The spleen becomes dirty. Person is healing, not taking care. So contamination happens. All right, contamination takes place. Uh, you have to understand, you remember in the earlier part of the chapter, they said that this, is ex this outward force is very beneficial for people who are in your area. They call them vampires. So those people around you, you're sending out excess energy and they're absorbing that excess energy. But in the process of absorbing the excess energy, it creates a link, right? If they're inside your energy, they're absorbing. If you can take in, you can give back, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not one way. The moment you, the person is connecting, taking your energy, he is like giving back. So what is he giving back? Free donation. Contamination, <laughs> all right? So this happens when you do healing. This happens when you're uh, talking to a person or a friend who's uh, upset. This happens through many ways. And when they're upset, there's a much better channel of astral vibrations to carry that garbage. Now, what happens is the spleen starts to get dirty, all right? Um, and usually the back heart, because since they want affection from you or they want, you know, people who are powerful, they somehow connect on the back solar because they want power. So for most low, you know, uh, uh, people who are not highly developed, they, their power center is the back solar, so they connect to the back solar, and then they absorb uh, this energy. And this, this, gets, this, this uh, starts to uh, dirty your spleen and your other chakras if you are not taking proper precautions, like cleaning yourself, salt water baths, blah, 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 if you don't find healing. Um, now, what will happen is the inflow of energy becomes less. So more, less energy is coming to the spleen, less energy is coming to the back heart, maybe less energy comes from the basic. You're going and sitting and traveling here and there, you're not taking care. The lower chakras become dirty, um, and so the energy inflow is less. That energy circulating in your body becomes less. Less energy circulating in your body, more energy is being absorbed, and less energy is going out, all right? So instead of like, imagine a fire hose, it's now like one of those watering plants. Right? Twice. So it starts to droop. And then it becomes so less, it starts to droop. So there's a lot of gaps between the striations for the germs to go through. All right? You have to understand that when you're protected to a certain extent in the inner world, even the germs have etheric bodies. We have studied this in chapter one <clears throat> with the spirale. Okay? So, uh, so even the germs have etheric body. It is the etheric body of the germs that probably get repelled and through the principle of correspondence, the physical uh, body also gets repelled. Okay? So that is what I think happens. Now, how can it happen? What, what are the factors with which the health rates will go down? Disease and contamination. Uh, over fatigue. Okay? So that means you're working a lot. You have deadline. Not, not uh, you know, some people, they're working, not sleeping every day, every day, and then your body's so tired, exhausted, that you are overloading your body. You know, when you're awake longer, uh, and if what is said probably, you need, your, your health rate is 100, you're recovering in the night, you're sleeping less. What is happening is the amount of energy coming in your system is much less, so it's not enough. Okay, so um, less, so overwork, 
and a wound. So when you have a wound, tremendous amount of prana is required to, depending on the size of the wound, to repair. And so if your spleen is not clean, um, then it will create a problem. It's like uh, overload, you know? It's like too many plugs in one socket, okay? So it gets overwhelmed. And I think that's why all the chakras that uh, Amit mentioned are usually the chakras we treat when a person has uh, severe infection in advanced pranic healing. Whether it's the basic, whether it's the soles of the feet, whether it's the spleen, whether it's the throat, whether it's the crown. So also, you'll also realize that as people go older, their basic chakra becomes less elastic, less flexible, and absorbs much less ground prana, which is important for vitality. So the health rates for older people is much more droopy in comparison. And because of that, the immune system goes down. And because of that, they can fall sick easily. Uh, and because of that, they're very prone to disease or uh, catching viruses and germs. And so if you look at that thumb thing that you were talking about, someone's asked us a question, obviously it'll be much less. Yeah? So No video or volume? Can... What? You can't hear us? Uh, no, you can hear, you can hear. Okay. So uh, the number of, uh, you know, the thumb that we spoke about will start to reduce as you start to feel... Um, because if there's no video volume, I would have wasted a lot of my time right now. I don't know what I would have done. I know. I mean, we'll still be in chapter four. <laughs> I would have just gone forward. I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay so, let's go. Um, all right. So what else? An irregular life. Uh, so wait, sorry. Depression of spirits. Uh, depression of spirits is uh, less divine energy. <laughs> okay. Their English is a little bit different. Spirit is a very uh, subtle word for breath. I think the initial word like Holy Spirit. So uh, depression or less uh, spiritual energy or less divine energy coming in. So all these are factors with which your health rate would droop. And that coincides with what Master Chua says. Uh, or through excess of an irregular life. So if you're overburdening, like if you have uh, maybe uh, one kilo of ghee a day combined with uh, five rasgullas, gulab jamun. Well, I have it once in a while, not every day. Once in a while only. Once in a while. Anyway. Uh, but I practice also the self-healing techniques. <laughs> so anyway, uh, and, and usually large amount of prana is required. Okay, so that is uh, basically the health or starts to do. And the rest of their saying is basically the way I'm looking at this, the next paragraph, the more you active, uh, the higher activity, you see, when you're running, you're exerting with the principle of correspondence. When you're moving your legs, you're moving your basic chakra starts to respond. When you move your throat like this, you're exercising like that, you're dancing, your throat gets big. All right. When that all gets big, the inlet gets big, so the health rate starts to become bigger. All right. So that is uh, basically what it talks about. What is, what is important to remember here is the stronger the health rate, the more powerful or less uh, less um, the more powerful you are, and the less chances you are of getting uh, tired, sick, or uh, affected or depleted. Okay. You have basically three components. You have the inner aura, which is part of the etheric body, which supplies. Uh, energy to the physical body. You have this health aura, which is your primary form of defense. And you have the outer aura, which is just basically like a container, a lid for your energy body. But the health rays are, I, I feel, very, very, very important. And if you look at most people, the health rays are like uh, hair. You know, like hair, like that. It's like, you know, they move with the, in the inner world, they're, they're floating. Anyway, they, they're not forward because they're, they're very, very, uh, like you can pluck it. It's very, very thin, all right? But if you look at people who are slightly more developed and as they do, and uh, in Arhatic Yoga, as they do the med meditation inner breath, this upgrades the body, including the health rays. This, uh, and when you do a level one and level two, especially level three, the health rays start to transform, okay? It's not only the golden body that's transformed, it is also, you have to remember gold is an etheric color. The health rate starts to really transform. So when you do level three very regularly, you'll notice that your body gets uh, uh, less tired and you notice that um, you, you, you won't get, your body won't fall sick that much unless it's due to external factors uh, that is, you know, dirty food uh, and certain other factors, the dirty water and certain other internal factors. Um, so I'll just quickly share the screen, just otherwise we'll lose track and then I'll... You know, when he was talking about the health rays going like that, like swaying, it reminded me of school when we would get those rulers and do yeah, that static thing percent. with the hair <laughs> of your friends. Ah, yeah. <laughs> it's like that movie, uh, what is that movie, um, What Women Want? No, uh, As Good As It Gets. I don't know. Let me just... 
Okay, I'll just share this one. Okay, so, so uh, here it talks about the health rays. Um, and then, okay, this is about the vampire that's done. So here, Master talks about pine trees exactly. So um, pine trees are really, really a lot of excess prana. Okay, and now if you look at most people, you'll notice they're like, you know, uh, hair. But if you look at this uh, painting of Mother Mary in, this is from Mexico, Guadalupe. Um, the health race, the person who painted this is uh, probably clairvoyant. If you notice, the crown is very big. Um, and you notice that um, usually when they're standing on a lotus or sitting on a lotus, you'll see deities like that. That means that their chakras are bigger than their body. The deities don't have any fun in saying, okay, just hold on, you're going to paint me. I'm going to go on that uh, lake there and I'm going to sit on that lotus. This is not big enough. I need one bigger than me so I can, you know, you paint me. Uh, it's to show that the chakra is bigger, their energy centers are big, much, much bigger than their bodies. Uh, so here you can clearly see the health rays are not only like hair, they're actually very thick and golden, all right, golden and very, very thick. So if you look at people, it's like who are developed, very developed, very powerful, the health rays are very strong. And if you come into contact with them, just being in their aura, you get healed very, 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 very fast if you're receptive, okay. So here, these are just quotes um, uh, talking about uh, how Master talked about even the health rays forming a shield that protects your body from disease energy and germs as well. And that it's perpendicular as well. So it correlates what's said in the book. And it says if a person is weakened, they droop and they entangle and they make it a person susceptible to infection. Okay. And the capacity of the health rays. So here, um, there are two, uh, there's a small change here. It talks about only the prana coming in is less will make the health rays droop. But according to Master Choa, oops, according to Master Choa, what does he say? I noticed something about it. Uh, he says, you can bring it down here. Yeah, once again, he says, uh, are expelled by the health rays to the pores. If a person is weakened, the health rays droop and partially entangle, the whole body belongs to the health. Okay, the capacity of the, uh, okay. Now, it's not only for the capacity of the body to resist external influence of energy. The book talks only about external influence, but even internally, any toxins produced by the body, any germs, any disease energy in the body, the ability to throw out that disease energy gets affected. In the book, it talks only about external influence on the body, but here it's, it's more complete. It's internal and external. One sec. Sorry. It's okay. She has a map. It's pretty cool. But okay. I think that's it, right? That I spoke about for. Her. Oh. <laughs> he. Okay. All right. So now we move on to the next part. Uh, so we're talking about all these germs that could um, affect us. We're talking about this toxic or uh, hostile influences. That's the word that they use here that could also affect us. And so we're talking about literally shielding ourselves. And so they say that both the etheric uh, body and the prana that we have are, uh, can be programmed by the will of the person to create what we call this shield or a shell. And this is basically what Master Cho talks about in pranic psychotherapy and in psychic self-defense. And so it says, it is possible therefore to protect oneself to a considerable extent from these hostile influences by making, well, what do we do? We make an effort of the will to check the radiation of vitality at the outer extreme of the health aura. So cool, no, it sounds. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I, maybe for us at that point, if we never read Master Cho's book, you wonder what's happening. So you're basically talking about using your will. If this is, say, about two feet, and that's where my health aura ends, so I just have to be aware of it and then kind of uh, in, enhance uh, the vitality at that extreme end of my health aura. Building it into a wall or shell, uh, which will be impervious, which means, uh, you remember internally permeable that we use in, in, in our shielding. So basically not allowing these germs to then come into the body and affect the physical form of the person and prevent the vitality from being sucked away as well. So it's not just from outside 
that these influences cannot affect us, but also our energy is not then pulled out by vampires. So both for our sustenance, with which we require the prana and the vital force, and at the same time from outside, we don't get affected. And so they talk about this shell or, uh, or this field of wall that we can create. With a little uh, effort, the shell, uh, I would call it shield at this point, um, may also be made on the astral and the mental level. Yes, so you, which means you can then protect yourself from emotions that could affect you and also mental thoughts of people who, who might actually kind of uh, uh, affect you when you want to make a presentation or you need to do a talk and then you realize the thoughts of these people are already bothering you. So it's not just to protect your etheric body with the health rays, but they're saying if you have a little bit more practice, if you've done psychic self-defense, you have that operanic uh, uh, psychotherapy, you can also protect a person from both astral, that is emotional and uh, negative thoughts and negative emotions, let's put it very simply. Now, the question of the etheric shield is also important that it will be necessary because it's so important that we will be talking about it later, yes? And we will be dealing purely with the health aura. So we'll come back to this a little later, just, just to remind us. Uh, do you want me to go into this plane or we'll come back to that? Different yes, yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know much to say about that. Okay, so we spoke about it in the beginning of the chapter. Correct. So we're just going to repeat uh, what they mentioned earlier. So they're basically talking about this the spleen chakra. Maybe it's it's just kind of to end it all. So the development of the spleen is very important for us, especially if you and I are on the spiritual path and we would like to be conscious of our astral travels and what we what we were able to experience in that. So it says here, it helps us to then remember the astral journeys that you and I have had. Uh, but for most of us, it is very partial. We're not able to remember all the details of what happened. And so they say as, as this connection between the etheric and the astral body starts to become stronger and stronger, then you will become very conscious of uh, what transpired in that journey uh, when you went to sleep. And so they say, though, it's not gonna just be vague memories anymore. Um, it would actually be very clear. And so it goes on to say those vague memories that most of us have of blissful, blissful flights through the air are often due to slight accidental stimulation of the spleen chakra. However, if it is well developed and the connection between the etheric and the astral are better, um, it would be even better. And they continue to say, uh, they end with this, they're saying that the astral corresponding center, yes, for the spleen chakra is is uh, the function of this particular astral spleen chakra is um, vitalizing the whole astral yes body. is to also vitalize the whole astral body just like the etheric spleen energizes the entire etheric body they also mention that the corresponding spleen does the same thing for the astral body so with that uh, I'll hand it over to Amit and then hopefully he'll finish so we won't go to the next one. Oh, really look oh Okay. No. I thought we finished both chapters today. Okay, when is the best time to do the uh, breathing for the tree and hug the tree? I have no idea. Uh, you'll have to find someone to scan the tree uh, and observe clairvoyantly morning, afternoon, night, uh, <laughs> all day, all night. Uh, but Master Choa would go mostly in the morning for his walks, early morning, six. Yes. So six I, I think I recommend that because that's the time where the oxygen is also probably better for you and me. Uh, but if you can't, it doesn't matter. As long as you find that little time to go and find a tree and do some breathing, a healthy tree is good enough. All right. Um, both etheric matter are very readily amenable. Okay, this is basically, as Sumi said, it's a shield. Uh, when you say amenable to the human will, will, right? So she's talking about, what did you say? What is the word did you use? Sorry? What is the word did you use when you were talking about it? The shield. Yeah. The shell. Yeah. The wall. The will. What what did you say about it? It was either the wall no, or the, the shell. Will, will, will. I don't know what it was. So basically it is called programming the, the shield. Did oh. you say programming? No. It's programming the shield, right? Can energy be programmed? Seriously? You must be crazy. Ah, uh, intention, okay. Okay, intention or programming or whatever you want to call it. But uh, can energy be programmed? What do you think you're doing with your computer? <laughs> your computer is energy that's programmed, right? So when you're using your computer, you're programming the energy to do whatever you want, to create programs. 
All right? So you, are, you have subtle energy, and these subtle energy follow your instructions. All right? Um, you have pine trees in India. You have to just go to Kashmir. Bulmark and all has. <laughs> yeah, but just be safe, yeah? <laughs> On different accounts. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, it is possible to protect oneself, blah, 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 to the impervious to disease germs and prevent the vitality. How does it protect you from disease germs? Uh, that is very, very interesting. Uh, partially, it will protect you. Partially, partially, it will protect you. Because uh, when you're protected uh, in the inner world, um, to a certain extent, you're protected in the physical world. Uh, there was one example of, um, there's a poster called the Great Invocation Poster that Master would uh, bless. He's blessed. He, there are some available, um, not for sale anymore, uh, but not all the time. <laughs> but... Um, he blessed it for 50 years and it's supposed to be like a protection wherever you put it on the east wall so the you know i think it was one of the hyatts in the philippines or what uh, i don't remember which one there was an earthquake or indonesia there was a big earthquake and everything on the right left everything collapsed the room in which the great invocation poster was was completely intact so i was wondering so master was like that's very interesting i said but that's the range that's it <laughs> so does earthquake sit underneath the grid which or hold it just... maybe in a hotel scenario you need more because there are too many people to 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 shield right okay so well, luckily for us it worked yeah so let's see what master talks about um in this to validate what we're we're discussing and of course he says um a program is basically composed of energy plus your mind intent, right? So basically your will is used to program. The subtle, uh, follow your, the subtle energy follows your instructions. So if you happen to live in a mega city with the stresses high, the etheric auric shield can be used against unintentional psychic attacks that occur on a regular basis. It can protect you from psychic contamination or, or uh, evil physical influences. <laughs> Um, and from etheric and physical harm to a limited degree. Okay? And toxic influence. Yeah, toxic influence. It can also be used just to maintain one inner poise and clarity of mind. Right. Okay. Uh, I don't think I put the other quote here. Oh, I didn't. Okay, there's a quote, uh, I have it, uh, in which Master Chua talks about the two shields. Uh, you put a body fit shield, and uh, this is a psych cell defense book. Uh, body fit shield and another shield, uh, which is outside. All right, so the body fit shield is to protect your etheric body and your etheric chakras, and the other shield is to protect your health aura. Okay, so your health aura is protected and your uh, etheric body is protected. Um, and then basically, he talks about those vague memories. Uh, the now, you have to understand basically what they're talking about. There are a lot of gaps in this chapter where they don't talk about Ida Pingla, they don't talk about Ning, and they don't talk about Kundalini, they don't talk about solar plexus, solar plexus, uh, and they don't talk about the sex chakra and all that stuff. All that has to do with also your nervous system and the overall health of your nervous system. As you know, that many nervous system disorders are used to, are due to malfunctioning basic and sex chakras. Uh, okay, so um, that plays an important role. Unfortunately, these chakras are omitted, so the teaching is a little bit different. Um, but you have to keep in mind that basically what they're trying to say is if you want to remember your dreams and if you want to move consciously in the astral world, you need to upgrade your nervous system. And one of the ways of upgrading your nervous system is to have a very healthy, clean spleen chakra. But the other ways is through Kundalini uh, awakening and other techniques as well and uh, hatha yoga techniques and there are breathing exercise techniques and other techniques and that's the end of the chapter yay <laughs> at least today we finished <laughs> not as much as we thought i would but yeah we, we did finish all right so palavi uh, it is right that when you look at vegetation because of their uh, evolution uh, they don't have as much of emotional response as an animal would and therefore uh, what you mentioned there, yes, uh, it, it is easier <laughs> to eat. Uh, since plants are still not, um, yeah, we explained this, right? That's why yeah, we can eat them without- It's also in the earlier recording. They don't, yeah, it's in the earlier recording when we were talking about the nervous system and how they don't feel pain uh, because, you know, otherwise the 
carrot will be screaming when you are eating it. Yeah, so uh, coming back to the temple tree, uh, yes, if you have a, an amazing people tree, you know, the Ashoka tree and stuff like that in a temple, which has been there for so long, uh, with the spiritual energy constantly surrounding it, it would also be a healthy tree to sit under and do some pranic breathing and absorb it. Yeah. But you still have to scan these trees, huh? You have to really scan them. You just scan them for pranic energy and tree prana. Uh, Not, yeah, tree prana and pranic energy. Yeah, so wearing a body fit shield, which you're talking about in psychic self defense, will protect you, definitely. Yeah. Yes, uh, it does have an effect. The body fit shield is very good when you're going on flights because if you're shielded from outside, what if the. Uh, what is the word? What if the. What is the word? I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, what word do you want? Okay, supposing you're shielded till here, what if the point of attack, or not really say attack, but is within your shield? Then it won't shield you because the shield is outside. Or point of influence. We'll come back to it next time. I'll, think, I'll remember it. Um, okay. Long time, I haven't taught that class. All right, um, so the whirling technique will work for both um, etheric and physical body and chakras. Yes, to an extent it will. For the Definitely for the for whirling, corona, uh, for whirling technique for both etheric and physical body and chakras. Yes. It will protect. All right. Okay. So uh, someone wanted you to mention again about the nervous system. Oh, that's a long talk. Yeah. Just go to the uh, previous recordings. Previous recording. Uh, because I was talking about when I talk about nervous system, I, I mentioned. Um, well, as long as you don't get affected by mosquitoes, you can do your meditation under a healthy tree, no problem. You can. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah. You might think a kundalini is awakening and the actual and snake might be coming, so just be careful, yeah? So she's saying it's the <laughs> word you're looking for embedded. No, no, not embedded. Uh, Master would use this word and I keep using it, but I forgot it. Yes, you can. You can go to the previous recordings. It's on the Vimeo link that's given to you. You can go and look can at it. Can you use it to shield against coronavirus? I have no idea and I'm not going to experiment with that. But, uh, for, but uh, um, theoretically, to a certain extent, what it will definitely do is it will avoid other people's uh, thoughts and emotions about the virus affecting you. All right. Fewer energies and all that. If you make a proper uh, emo right. etheric emotion. But I think we did teach, uh, that was only in Karnataka, where we were looking at healing by sound to, uh, to, uh, we can, to clean the, to. Okay. That's something that Master thought, oh, this is being recorded, so I will just quote. Okay, so uh, Chandani uh, has given you all the link for earlier recordings, if you'd like to look at it. So I think the base of the spine, which is the next, uh, uh, the next chapter, which is your Muladhara chakra, uh, we'll look at it next week. I mean, sorry, we'll look at it on Wednesday. Otherwise, starting it, even though it, it takes a very short, it's a short chapter, but I think maybe starting now may not make sense. We can just answer your questions. Uh, research yes, says vegetables it's... actually fainted just before the knife for cutting them came close. I don't know. What, what happens when it's in the, I, but then before, when it has to faint, when is it awake? Like, can I talk to them? I'd like to. So, so we're, we're supposed to do basic chakra. We have only five minutes. So what would you like to do? Only Corona, we can test with our, okay, I hope. Um, Ekta had put a hand Creating up. a mask shield? I have no idea. Those, no, it's not required. I don't, how would you put that? Okay, I think we're <laughs> done. Uh, let's start what? <laughs> the basic chakra. <laughs> Yes, since so we have. When will the recording be available? Um, the recordings will be available for at least six months or more. If you have the, if you, if your book is in transit, you've bought it. You can look at, you can download one online, delete it after the book comes. It's. I don't think that's technically stealing, is yeah. it? No, as long as you it. buy the book. As long yeah. you buy it. When you don't have the means for uh, now. Energy rich plants and food, if possible. Yep. You know, Master was writing a book on plants and prana for a long time. I don't think he finished that. Yeah. That was a long time ago. 
Okay. You know, but one of the things you have to remember is don't get fanatical about the information given here. Yeah, yeah. We are only giving you this information. This is our understanding and what's mentioned in the book, hopefully. Uh, and we're correct about some of these things. But because we say it's plants or it's animals, let other people evolve at their own time to decide whether they don't want to have food from a certain, a certain type of food. Let's not then influence them because of what we know. Yeah. But if they are willing to listen, then yes, that's a different thing. But if they, if they don't want to, don't force them. Don't worry. It's ahimsa with the plants and all. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It's minimal. Otherwise, what are you going to eat? You'll die. <laughs> I mean, then a cold pressed juice would be like torture for the, uh, for the plants. <laughs> cold press, slow, excruciating. Anyway, it's all right. Don't worry about it. The prana is still there. And, um, and one thing is very important. Two things I, I, I always get from study. If you realize we understand even Master Chua's teachings, for those of you who are pranic healers, on a much more deeper level. Number one, it makes you really appreciate the idea uh, that Master Chua has given and the way he's given it. And you start to understand why you can teach a basic pranic healing course in two days. Because if you start talking about the etheric particles and the nervous system and this year, <laughs> and then, oh, by the way, there's astral and the mental chakra and these chakras also there. Learn all of them and also all these nadis and all this and this and that. You, you know, it, 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 you might be very impressed, but you might not learn much. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, although you notice that there are a lot of things that we do not know. There are a lot of things that we know and there are a lot of things that we do not know. But what we are getting is we're getting a very good base to build on later. For example, if somebody wants to talk to you about how a spleen, uh, how energy actually enters the spleen, you meet a teacher who will tell you, you know what, the spleen goes here, it goes here, it goes here, it goes here. You'll be able to understand much more deeply because you understand now how the prana enters at the current pace. And you know what you know and you know what you don't know. So you'll be able to ask good questions and you'll be able to further develop yourself. But without study, you have no idea what you, what, what, you know, what all you need to know in the future. Okay. So, right, shall we end? yes, <laughs> we're almost at 29, 729. Uh, so I think for Wednesday, we can look at uh, probably two chakras. Yeah, yeah, because navel is only one page, but I, I want to talk a lot about it. It no, is basic two, is still... Yeah, basic is like two, three... Two, three sheets. sheets. So hopefully we'll finish we'll, basic. Basic will finish. We yeah. Finish so if there's time, we'll go to the other, but we won't jump into it at the last moment. It might be, uh, you know, let's just do it a little bit. I know it might be too slow for some of you. Uh, hopefully not too slow, but uh, we'd like you to take the information and absorb it. And please use your own openness of your mind to try and figure out what we are saying. Does it make sense to you? Yes. Uh, don't just swallow it just because we said it. Yeah. Remember it's our, it's my viewpoint. It's his viewpoint. We have also different viewpoints sometimes. So you need to figure out what makes sense for you. Yeah. Unlike Master Chua, uh, his books, it's very simple. It's very clear here. Sometimes uh, there is a lot more space for misinformation. Well, it's good information. It's very yeah. good information. It helps us understand uh, the system better. So let's end with a prayer. Close your eyes. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok Sri, to Lord Maha Guruji Mele, to all the great ones, to all the healing ministers, healing angels, the beings of knowledge, light and power, to our soul and divine self, we specially thank you for your presence, for your understanding, for your help, for your guidance. Thank you for helping us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge, for giving us a clearer and deeper understanding of these priceless teachings. Help us to assimilate this knowledge and use it to make ourselves better instruments in your service. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Thank you, everybody. Thank Akhil you very Namaste. much. And thank you for coming and bearing through this whole Etheric book. Yes. <laughs> like I said in the first session, it is encyclopedic in nature, right? <laughs> oh, oh. It looks very thin. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's very thin, but <laughs> we've barely done how many pages? We've done 30 something. That's pretty good, yeah. We've done almost 30 pages. No? Really? Yeah, 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 we've done 35 pages. Yeah. We're on the 36th page. It was amazing. Sure. You know, we've done only this. It's the only, it's only <laughs> one where if the chapter is two pages, my PowerPoint will be 12 pages. <laughs> 12 slides. So. Right. So uh, let us know if this is working for you. Uh, if you feel that it's too much, then we can take a break and do I've it. actually toned down on the cross referencing. I almost <laughs> went into Alice Bailey in the second session, then I pulled back because otherwise it will become too much. So we're just sticking to Master Chua and maybe uh, uh, immediate theosophical teachings. So, just to reaffirm the point. 
All right, everybody. Thank you so see much. You guys. Enjoy your time with your family. Bon appetit. Bye. And I will see you Wednesday yeah. at 6 30. Bye. Yeah. And if you want to join, meditation is at six o'clock, just the two in hearts for COVID, since this is still spiking around. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Atmanamaste. Bye.